Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to yet another in-depth first person walk around here on NNT Auto Reviews. My name is Tyler as always behind the camera and today we are taking a look at the refreshed 2021 Audi A4 in the very basic no options added premium trim level. Okay, so before we get started with all the details and everything, I'd like to show you guys the Monroni label here. And I think to me, this is the most important part before we start getting into details so that we know what we're working with. So the way Audi sets up their stickers is that we pretty much have the basic information all the way up top, and then we have all of our standard features as well as warranty informations, and as well as our options column. Now I chose to do this particular A4 because this car really doesn't have any options whatsoever. So you kind of get a feel what the most basic A4 looks like. You can see we do have a couple of accessories. We have the Audi beam rings that uh, it's a little projection on the bottom of the, um, of the uh, passenger doors and it will project a little Audi ring on the floor at nighttime and then we also have just the all-weather floor mats. We also have a destination charge of just over a thousand dollars and a total sticker price of forty thousand six hundred and ten dollars for this particular unit. If we take a look down below you can see we have the parts content you can see where all of the parts the final assembly point where everything comes from on this car and finally we could take a look up here where we have our shipping information as well as crash test ratings you can see it scored very well from the government uh, crash test and finally our fuel economy information and wrapping around to the side profile of the a4 you could see some pretty neat body lines now a total refresh not a total redesign but a refresh came out uh, for the 2020 model year on the a4 and it gave them some pretty cool body lines you could see right near the hood and then one that uh, kind of stops in the middle but continues towards the rear into the tail lamp so pretty cool new body lines uh, that came out on the refresh of this model but the wheelbase stands at 111 inches and there are eight total color options available on the premium trim and we are working with the uh, brilliant black which is a flat black so there's no metallic in the paint and making our way out back, we can discuss some of the drivetrain options. Now, uniquely enough for the 2021 model year, Audi actually came out with uh, two different engines for the basic A4. We have a uh, two liter turbocharged for both engines. However, there are two different uh, horsepower and torque ratings. Now they named the engines uh, by uh, 40, which is this model here, which is the smaller horsepower, and the 45, which is the larger horsepower. Now the 40 makes just over 200 horsepower, and the um, 45 makes just over 260 horsepower. We get into the specific numbers once we pop the hood. However, even on the most basic A4, you will get the uh, Quattro Ultra system all-wheel drive. All right, so let's start off the details of the exterior on this 2021 A4. We'll start out up front, give you a nice head-on view. Very nice use of um, sort of your chrome on the grill and sort of a matte chrome around the little uh, accents on the bottom. We'll start off with our headlights. And coming standard, you do have full LED headlights. High and low beams are both LEDs. You also have uh, your LED daytime running lights and your uh, turn signals are an incandescent bulb. Take a look down below. It looks like we have some fog lights, but those are actually um, your sensors for all of your front uh, collision avoidance systems. You actually do have fog lights built into the regular headlight units. So again, we have a nice updated uh, grill for as of 2020 uh, a little bit different styling um, from the 2020 model year and the fact that the 2020 only came in an s-line uh, body kit but now this for 2021 we can get more of a uh, classy body kit rather than a sporty one so pretty good looking front end 
So taking a look up at the hood, it's a nice uh, wide hood in the fact that the hood kind of goes closer to the wheel arches than in normal cars, so it opens uh, pretty wide. If we take a look down at our wheels, of course these are the most basic wheels, and they are 17 inch, uh, uh, 17 inches large. They come wrapped on Continental tires and measure 225.50. Nice uh, painted silver finish to them, and you also have uh, pretty decently large uh, brake calipers. All around the windows we have uh, chrome, and then on the pillars we have gloss black. You take a look up top, we have a sunroof standard. Wrapping around on the other side of the mirrors, you can see we have an LED turn signal indicator. We have uh, nice accented uh, chrome door handles. Now the only thing that was kind of strange to me on this car is that we have imprints for a smart key entry system, but there is actually no smart key entry on the base A4. You have to get the convenience package on the premium to in order to get that. Back here we also have ventilated discs, which is nice to see. And back here we have the same LED treatment, so we don't miss out on any of the cool um, dynamic turn signals or anything like that. Audi still gives you all of the nice LED lighting. Down here we have some nice bright work, also some uh, real exhaust tips, so you can see it's actually a surround, but the actual exhaust comes out of the surround. Nice chrome accentuation from the tail lamp all the way across the deck lid. As far as badging, we have the A4, the rings, and the Quattro badge. We also have a trunk release and your backup camera over here as well. So even though this is the most basic A4 you can get, pretty stylish looking sedan if you ask me. Alright, so now let's take a peep at this new uh, base powertrain for the A4. So as you can see with the hood open, very wide and easy access to the engine. So you have dual latches up top to increase the rigidity. Also some lining to keep the uh, injector noise out. You have this little switch right here to, un, uh, to release the hood. And overall, this new two liter turbo, and I'll put the all the specs of the uh, horsepower and torque in the little box below. I'll put it for this new, uh, more basic power plant and also for the um, increased horsepower two liter. Again, this is the uh, smaller output engine. It just looks really clean underneath the hood of this car. Not a whole lot of fancy stuff going on. Although I have to say, by looking at the rings around the alternator, this is actually a mild hybrid. So that'll help out with your auto start stop. It'll actually eliminate the starter and actually the electric engine will turn the motor. It also reduces wear on your starter, which is pretty nice. But just a really clean engine bay, nothing weird going on. Actually, a pretty neat feature on these cars is the uh, windshield washer fluid is right here, right next to the hinges on the passenger side. Pretty unique spot for that.
Alrighty, so let's take a look at what the interior on the most basic A4 looks like. As far as color options go, we of course have the black, and you can choose between four different colors. Obviously the black, like you see here, you can get a tan, a brown, or a, a gray. So if you're wondering what the materials are like, you have soft touch up here, harder touch plastic down here, and then also like a leatherette material here and here where your arm rests. You have a, a piece of oak wood here, some bright work, and your lock unlock buttons. Individual child locks for both the rear doors, your window switches and heated mirror controls. Trunk release and one of the speakers on the door. And the most basic um, speaker setup you can get is 10 speakers, so which is pretty nice. You also have a little storage tray there. And you can almost make out the Audi rings right here on the ground, so that's a projection that comes from the uh, bottom of the door, which is pretty cool. Nice uh, stainless steel uh, tread plate there. Take a look at the left of the dash. We have an air vent, a little bit of gloss black, a little bit of wood. Your lighting controls, your all-weather lighting, which is kind of like your fog lights. You can pop this right out and you have a gauge dimmer. You can also see the release lever right here for the tilt telescoping steering wheel. And we have our pedal box and our hood release off to the left. And we also have a pretty large storage container here, which you can see fits your owner's manual. So it's all felt line and it goes in quite a ways. So you can see how big this owner's manual is. That'll fit right in there with some extra room. So real leather seats, it's not a leatherette or anything on the base A4. Very nice contrast stitching, headrest. You can uh, move them up and down with this button on the side there. And we have full power with four-way lumbar. So the front of the seat goes up and down, the rear of the seat, it's moving back and forth, and the backrest goes back and forth as well. But let's hop in out of the cold and wind and we'll see what the rest of the driver's cockpit looks like. Alright, so here's the key fob you get with any A4 or A5, anything like that. Pretty snazzy looking key. You've got the metallic buttons and the Audi logo at the bottom. You have the unlock, lock, trunk release, and panic alarm there. And also on the sides you have these two buttons, one here, one there. You pinch those simultaneously. The bottom of the key will come out with um, the physical key in case you need to use that. Give you a little cool slot right there to put your key and of course it has push button ignition so you just put your foot on the brake and press the button. Alright so let's start off the driver's cockpit portion of the interior with what is right in front of us and it has, that is of course the uh, fully leather wrapped uh, steering wheel pretty good looking steering wheel. You have the stitching on the inside. Uh, pretty good grip holsters right here. Fits in the hand very nicely. You have paddle shifters as standard mounted to the steering wheel, uh, not on the column. You have a small airbag cover with the circular surround around the uh, Audi rings. As far as buttons and functionalities go, we have pretty much two uh, section of buttons. This one has to do with the screen up there, and these have to do with your media controls, so Bluetooth, telephone, voice commands, uh, skipping between your different songs, as well as volume with the little roller right here. Now you might be saying, it's a little button with that uh, star on the steering wheel. Well, that's actually a programmable button. 
uh, you can actually go in the screen and the, you, it gives you like um, I want to say maybe eight to ten different presets on what you want that button to do so you pick what you want it to do you press the button it'll do it it's a pretty pretty good idea there taking a look behind the steering wheel we have our uh, turn signal stock which also houses your high beams they are automatic high beams so all Audis for 2021 will actually come standard with uh, automatic high beams and we also have our lane keeping assist button at the end of the stock so if you want to turn that on and off and finally our cruise control is right there on the stock as well and to the right we have our wiper controls now taking a look up here we have our uh, standard gauges so you have uh, your analog uh, rev counter and speedometer with your uh, coolant temperature and uh, gas gauge to either side then we have a nice color screen in the center which will display various informations and to display those informations you use the uh, buttons right here so this of course is not the full digital cockpit you have to go to the, to the uh, premium plus to get that however this little screen in the not really little but the screen in the center does a very good job of displaying uh, quite a bit of information so here we are basically in the driver's information uh, uh, display and that's one of the three different uh, settings you could choose now once you're in a certain screen you can use the squirrel wheel with the OK and then kind of a more menus button uh, to get more information so right now we have like a kind of uh, date and time section uh, digital speedometer we have uh, real-time consumption as well as a bar uh, well the bar will show you real-time consumption and then the uh, top will show you your average scrolling down again we have short and long-term memory uh, energy consumption so it'll kind of tell you what is taking up the most energy and how much miles per gallon you could save so take a look at what happens when I turn the seat heating off. The bar will kind of go down just a little bit and it'll tell you how much energy you could save. Pretty neat little quirky screen there that they added in. Then we also have our driver's assistance which has to do with the lane keep assist and whatnot. So if you're, if you're on a road where it detects the lanes and it can keep you in them, these uh, lines will illuminate green so that's when you know the lane keeping assist is actually active. On any one of these screens you could press the buttons over there and uh, go through your trip computer settings. You could also uh, press OK for different um, different settings like uh, resetting your uh, short and long term memory. We could scroll over to our audio screen which kind of shows you all the radio stations here. You could program it to show your presets. Using this button again over here, we could switch to our different sources. And then one more screen we have is the phone screen. So if we did get the nav, even on the smaller screen, we could have the navigation set up in there. It just won't be the full display like in the virtual cockpit. Taking a look at the dash, it's pretty nice material, you know, not leather or anything, but it's a nice soft touch. We have a couple of speakers up there as well as the defroster. And a very nice uh, newer screen setup. So this basically came on the 2020 A4 and it carries over for the 2020 model year. Very modern looking screen, very good size. As you can see, compared to the my hand, it is quite a bit bigger. Now this is one of your home screens and you can scroll between all your apps over there. And you could also have a jumbulation of uh, what your audio is doing, what your telephone is doing, and what your navigation is doing. Now please note that this car doesn't come with navigation from the factory, however you can subscribe to it uh, after you purchase the vehicle if you'd like. Now, this car of course does have Apple, does have Apple Auto. Uh, uh, Apple CarPlay Android Auto rather and you go switch to that right there we have our radio screen here and you'll also have quick buttons on the side our media screen 
our phone screen, navigation if we purchased it, your phone apps again and your, and your uh, vehicle screen. So we can go through our drive select here and it comes with four different driving modes. If you take a look over here you get different uh, pictures depicting each mode. I also have the individual where you can customize two different uh, two different settings individually so you can customize your drive and your steering feel. We can go into our lighting and visibility screen as well. Into your lighting you can customize how bright you want it or not. Uh, exterior lighting. There are different driver's assistance systems so you can see which co what comes standard on the A4 and it looks like a pretty good amount. You can go to our favorite screen which you could customize that if you'd like. And then all of our settings. We can go into our general settings. Display brightness and whatnot. Uh, your sound settings. You can select different users, say if you're yourself or your wife is driving the car as well, you can uh, kind of just select different users and you could set up all your, um, all your settings yourself. Scrolling over, we also do have a couple of extra apps on the screen so you could purchase different apps, again with the user screen there, uh, calendars, messages, all that good stuff. You could also swipe from the top of the screen and get uh, quick things such as your garage door opener, your air ionizer, and your sound settings and different profiles and whatnot in there too. So very nice screen, uh, very responsive as well. It's pretty much just like using using uh, one of the latest and greatest tablets. Uh, one thing I could say they improved, they could have improved on is integrating the screen. I'm not a big fan of the stand-up screens, uh, but I guess this one does work out pretty well because if you're sitting in my position, which I like to sit kind of low and a little bit farther back, the screen is right about here and it doesn't really block any of your view, which is good. So taking a look below the screen, we have a couple of air vents and your hazards button. We also have our climate control in this section here. So we have the three-stage heated seats for both front passengers. Buttons right there. We have our temperatures. It is actually a three-zone climate control. So we can uh, mess around with the temperatures here. You can also set it to a three-zone and set the rear. So we're now adjusting just the rear climate control. I like to keep it on sync for now. You have your defrosters. Also where you want the air to blow. We have the AC settings, the fan speed, uh, different zones as well as your passenger uh, where they want the air to blow. As you can see they're kind of a capacitive touch button. So if you just rest your finger on there it'll show you all of the menus. Then once you actually click it'll change uh, the settings. Down here we just have a couple of buttons to quickly select your drive mode, the auto start, stop on and off, the traction control on and off, and to turn the upper screen off. Taking a look down here we of course have our uh, start stop button, the USB jack and a 12 volt power outlet, a couple of cup holders, a storage tray which is pretty large actually and a pretty classy slab of oak wood. You have our volume knob and also skipping between the different radio stations or tracks. We have the uh, parking brake which is electronic so uh, when the red light is on it's active. Uh, when you press down it deactivates, pick up it activates. Just make sure your foot is on the brake. And finally, and may, maybe most importantly, down in the center stack is the uh, transmission lever. So it is a 7-speed dual clutch like in the uh, 
other A4 with the larger horsepower outlet um, output engine. Now you pretty much have a lock on the sign which you need to press to get into gear. You could bring it down into drive. At that point, you can actually put it over into a manual mode. You can uh, select your gears down here or up at the paddle shifters. If you bump it over, you have neutral as one click up and reverse as the next click up. As you can see, you get a pretty nice quality backup camera with the guidance lines that move. One thing I'd like to point out is if you have it in drive and in the manual mode and you press the P for park right here, it'll actually bring the shifter right back over. Pretty neat. Down here we have a nice uh, center console, pretty soft um, armrest there with some contrast stitching. If you lift that up, you have a pretty good amount of space. You also have a USB-C inlet, so you have the ability to either use the USB-C or the normal USB. Taking a look up here, we have an auto-dimming uh, frameless mirror. Also up on our center stack, we have some touch LED illumination, uh, more lighting information as well as some service reminders and emergency controls. And we also have our sunroof control right there. So we can see that our sunroof shade blocks 100% of the light. And it is a pretty decently sized sunroof. It's not a full panoramic unit, but it is a, uh, a little bit of an oversized sunroof. Now you can either slide it back by pressing the button back like this or vent it up by pressing the button up like that. I have a very good looking gray uh, headliner. I think this really brightens up the interior especially if you have um, the black seats. A couple more things I'd like to point out is you have some visors with the mirror and LED light. You can also put them over to the side and extend them. And lastly, you also do have a grab handle. So that pretty much does it for the front cabin of the A4, at least the driver's cockpit. Now at this point in the video, I'm going to adjust the uh, driver's seat to a comfortable and suitable driving position for myself, and I am 5 foot 10 uh, tall. Then we'll hop in the rear seat, see how much room we have, and also what kind of amenities uh, your rear seat passengers will have. Now the materials out back are just the same as out front, so soft touch plastic, hard touch plastic, and leatherette. We have a little bit of wood, metallic handles, a speaker, and your window switch. Our seats do fold down in a 60, uh, sorry, a 40, 20, 40 split. So we could fold this one down uh, individual from the center. And the center is actually up underneath. So that is kind of like your ski hatch. And you could also lock that out if you'd like. Then you also have an armrest with a storage console and a couple of drink holders. So pretty roomy back here actually. We have a couple of inches of legroom, some nice cutouts in the back of the seat so that it gives you just a little bit extra room. It's actually quite an upright seating position here. It almost feels like you're sitting in um, like a Q3 back seat which is a little bit taller. Now not really a lot of room for a center passenger in this car. As you can see it's a pretty big hump, not all that much room could you do it? Yes, 
Um, would they be uncomfortable after, let's say, half an hour? Probably. We do have a rear climate control back here. So you can see you can adjust the temperature for the rear seat passengers. And you also have a 12 volt power outlet. We have LED illumination back here for either passenger, coat hooks and grab handles on either side. We also have map pockets on the back of the door too. But next we're going to check out what the uh, front passenger seat has to offer and see how big the glove box is. Alright, so opening up the passenger door looks very much like the driver's door, just a few less buttons. And as far as the glove box goes, it actually is a pretty decent size. You can see we have some additional books and whatnot in there. It's all felt lined. You have a pen holder and some coin holders. And it also is illuminated with your little valet button right there. Now the passenger seat, as you can see by the controls, is powered. However, it loses the lumbar. But very nice attention to detail on these seats. So you can pop the trunk a multitude of different ways, but just to show you how it opens, without giving any assistance, we'll double tap on the key fob. Should actually pop right open for you, it's some kind of uh, springs in the um, hinges. So it'll pop the trunk lid right open for you. It's not an automatic trunk lid, so you're gonna have to close it yourself. But that's to be expected. So actually a pretty decent amount of space back here. You have a couple of nets on either side to where you can put extra storage you also have a 12 volt power outlet in there and one of my favorite little features it's just a small little feature but it makes a world of difference grocery bag hangers pretty neat if you ask me you can also see where the seats split you can see that right in the center we also have our carpeted floor mats back here so, pretty premium looking carpets there, very soft. We also have our all weather mats too. So those are front and rear. Carpeted cargo floor, and if we open that, we have a spare tire. Also pretty cool about these uh, cargo floors here is actually this little hook that you can actually hook right here. So in case you do get a spare tire, this uh, cargo floor will actually stay propped open for you. Opening the lid to the 15.3 gallon fuel tank. According to the EPA, you should be seeing right around 25 miles per gallon in the city and 34 on a highway. And it looks like you'll have to use premium fuel. You also do have a pretty neat uh, gas cap here to where you unscrew it. Have this little pin. The pin will go right in this hole right there and it'll uh, hold the cap so it doesn't dangle down and scratch your paint. So to conclude this video, I hope you have enjoyed the 2021 Audi A4 in the most basic form. As you can see, you don't really have to get a fully loaded A4 to get all uh, the nice features. So I hope you have enjoyed the video again, and I hope you stay with us here at NNT Auto Reviews for future in-depth walk-around videos.